events are being shaped at two levels. God, who has this master plan that's written down in the Bible. The devil, who doesn't believe it nor understand it, is doing his own thing. And God is orchestrating everything that Satan thinks he's doing as the God of this world to accomplish Satan's purposes is actually fulfilling God's. Never in history have they all attacked Israel, ever. This is a coalition coming. It's demonic, it's not human. It's a demonic passion to destroy God's chosen people of promise, the Jewish people. God always puts Jerusalem in the center of the world and the universe. He says his throne is over Jerusalem. There is a, a move of God afoot in this world, no matter how dark it looks, the Lord is doing something to help us to prepare for the days that are just ahead of us. I believe this world is, is mounting its last offensive against the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I believe the scriptures that we see about these days are going to be fulfilled, possibly in our time. We are seeing an increasing lawlessness all over the world. It's an anti-Christ spirit seems to be uh, gripping societies all over the place, even ones that formerly knew or understood the life in the light of God. Jesus said in Luke chapter 21 that men's hearts are going to fail them for fear and the expectation of those things that are coming on the earth. Not, not just the things that are happening, but their fear of the things that they know are going to happen. How do we know how soon all this is going to happen? So the specific details on the end of the world. What he describes right here in Isaiah 13 is repeated right here in Matthew where we're going, chapter 24, and then it's really expanded. And all of the different parts of the scripture, all the prophecies are united in Revelation 6 to 19. All of these things are the beginning of sorrows. So you also, when you see all of these things, notice this repetition, all of these things, all of these things. No, it's near at the doors. What's that? The second coming of Christ. Assuredly, I say, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. This obvious understanding that something is happening to everything around us that we once trusted in, but also in their heart, the expectancy, sense of foreboding in the hearts of those who have reasoning minds, those who are part of the kingdom of God as well, and we, we sense that some very difficult days are ahead of us. So like, we're like rowers in a storm, in a sense. We, we know the storm is about to get worse. And so the question is, how do I prepare for these coming days? Because Jesus in Matthew 25 speaks to those who made no preparation. The world is giving you your sense of stability, your sense of well-being, that everything will be all right tomorrow. But those that are wise, those who belong to God, you shall receive power. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you shall be witnesses of the reality of God, where you are, where you will be, and where God will send you eventually if you trust in Him. Why did Satan fall? Lucifer was created at the hands of God. You know what it says? All things were made by Him, and by Him all things consist. Literally, hold together. If God does not hold creation together because it's imperfect and not holy like he is, nothing is holy except for God and what God holds on to. If God doesn't hold something, it goes like this. That's the fall of Satan. That's where evil came from. That's where all the problems came from. It was God removed his hold. By the way, 2 Peter 3, did you know that God takes his hand off of the universe in 2 Peter 3? And it says the whole universe dissolves. It explodes and burns in what we would call thermonuclear explosion, and it's reconstituted into a new heavens and new earth. God says, I will give you a source of life. It's time to pray. It's time to ask God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, for what only God can give to you. Power, the security, the stability. 
the new mind, the assurance of a future, the strength to stand when the waves start roaring and the land starts shaking and societies start dissolving in our troubled times. He's willing to carry us through our storm. He's willing to make us into what only he can. It says in Daniel 12, 4, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. So here's the code. You know you're at the end, the Matthew 24 time, when two things happen. The first one, there's global travel. Five, almost five billion people, they're gonna run to and fro at the end of the world. Here's another one, Daniel says, at the time of the end, there's gonna be knowledge increasing, exploding knowledge. What, what is Daniel talking about? Daniel is talking about what I could say in one word. Have you thought about the fact that right now in your pocket, if you have a cell phone, you have the sum total of all the knowledge that's been known throughout all of history. Jesus is describing the second coming. He describes it in Matthew 24. He describes it in Mark 13. And he describes it right here in Luke 21. He says the same thing in all three, little, little variations, but the same event. He said there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on earth distress of nations with perplexity. Why? Because of global weather gone wild, the sea and the waves roaring. Look at verse 26. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken. It says the earth is gonna convulse. Do you know what else it says in Revelation 11? Everybody's watching because there's gonna be this global telecommunications. The, the Antichrist, the beast, the one masquerading as Jesus Christ causes all both small, great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark, a mark of allegiance. He promises to give you a power supply that will cause you to rise above your circumstances in life to be a voice and a force for good, to be a herald with light, with light and oil in his lamp or her lamp that can call people to the throne of God in a season of incredible darkness. I'm not suggesting you turn the lights out in your house. I'm suggesting you pull the plug on wherever your trust is that is not founded or found in the Son of God. Turn from the power supply of this world and turn to the Son of God. He is faithful. His promises are faithful. He still calls people out of the grave. He still heals. He still delivers. He still gives sight to those who can't see a way forward. He is still the treasure of heaven being given to you and I for strength and stability and security in our future. He's the one who can save your family to the uttermost. He's the one who can do things exceedingly above and beyond all that you can even ask or think. That's why he says in 1 John, I've given the, I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life and continue to believe in the Son of God. In other words, you, you will be attached to a power supply that this world has nothing, knows nothing about. You will not go down. If the ship's going down, you're not going down, you're going to go up, praise God. If the world turns dark, your light which comes from the power source of God will shine even brighter than any false hope that this world has to offer those who have their confidence in him. And in verse 14 of chapter 5, where we started in 1 John, John says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Do you hear me tonight? This is the confidence we have in him. This is the confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, anything, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have asked of him. Right now, we're right here, okay? We're the church on earth. And that's what Revelation 1 through 3 is about. But then, what happens next is the rapture of the church. And the rapture of the church is John 14, Luke 24, Acts 1, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4. We go to heaven, and what happens there is we get uh, the Bema Seat judgment, where our life passes through the fire, everything done for Christ, 
is our reward and we offer it to Christ. Then on earth is the tribulation, which we've talked about, chapter 13, all those horrors, which is culminated by the second coming of Christ, who sets up his kingdom for 1,000 years, and then the rebels are judged at the great white throne, and God lets us dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.